Hello and welcome to episode 102 in this series where I'm programming an NES game from scratch. Tonight I'm live on stream and uh, let's get back into what we were doing here. Just a quick uh, little note while we wait for Visual Studio Code to update. So uh, if you didn't notice, uh, Zero Pages episode 4, uh, which I called Hello Mario, like Hello World, um, but it displays Mario as this right, is uh, posted, it's on YouTube. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, if there's anything details wise that you want to uh, have me cover so that uh, we can go into more detail about what uh, you'd like to see in future episodes of the Zero Pages. Um, this one went pretty long, and I felt like it was probably just the only way that that was going to fit, like the, uh, the content, because there was just a lot to cover as we went through the basics of setting up uh, the game and, um, and getting the NES to run your code. And I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe we need to... Um, Maybe it needs to be broken up into shorter pieces. I just felt like I wanted to put together uh, an episode that went from start to finish your code running and then kind of uh, explained every every command we typed out and why. And so uh, if you feel like that was okay, then that's cool. If you'd like to see it be shorter in the future, I can break down episode four into smaller chunks and uh, and do stay consistent with the shorter videos uh, which is definitely harder for the more uh, complete sort of topics with going through a number of steps but uh, it seems like once again that sort of uh, adage about people watching YouTube videos for no more than about 10 minutes is true so um, maybe it's not really beneficial to anybody to have a video that's longer than 10 minutes because once that first 10 minutes elapses, you want to move on to the next 10 minute video. I don't know, but, but, uh, let me know in the comments in YouTube, or if you're watching live, you can let me know, uh, or you can let me know. I have a poll on Twitter going right now. Uh, to see what people think. Uh, maybe we'll get some feedback there as well. Uh, people seem to uh, respond pretty uh, pretty well to those polls. So, anyway. Sorry for that long, drawn-out intro. Uh, so, when we were working on this last time, we were converting over the uh, format of the project file, essentially the game project file, from the sort of flat text file format to this uh, JSON format that we're using to represent everything with the idea that we will be able to provide additional uh, pieces to a particular level. Looking at this actually yeah, so looking at this, you can see we have now an array of objects, and uh, each object has a layout array, and the layout array specifies what type of thing it is, and the scroll speed, and then the, uh, the, then the next part of the sequence. Uh, really haven't figured out how we're going to actually piece these things together in uh, in the actual game engine. So we probably want to do that here so that we can start putting this all together. And let's see, so that would be, we can do a couple of things. So we can, we can start with how how to kind of piece these things together. We can also try and implement the looping uh, type here, or we'll just call it maybe meta tile type, where it's 
just one of the meta tiles that we load um, being looped over and over again. Uh, the one of the things we haven't really tackled here. So the meta tiles, let me think about this. So right now the meta tiles are being defined by the map itself and we're referencing them. We're referencing them based on how the map loads them up, which that's okay. Just wondering if what we want to do is similar to this sprites array. Maybe we want to provide a meta tile array. Um, as a side note, one thing that I was uh, looking at is uh, Jordan has put together a, a title screen. I got to get back to him on some of the some of the details and ideas that he's got on on. Uh, how it's composed but I mean overall it's really cool and I'll show that uh, in in a video next week um, or or when he sends over the next update uh, unless what we have right now will be good enough to move forward the one big problem with it is the the um, conversion of that to something that can be rendered on the NES the colors are um, are they they fit within the color palette of the NES but there are seemingly too many sort of different uh, variations on pieces that that don't fit well into the uh, tile, uh, the name table, and the char rom. Uh, so, I've got to figure out how to convert that. I had tried using Shiru's uh, screen tool to do the import. That did not work. Um, I mean, it imported and did some uh, deduplication, it looks like, but it was not particularly good at translating the colors. And then uh, I tried using, if you've never seen Kasumi from Nintendo Age, he's got um, a tool called, uh, what is it called, I, iChar? And it's a pretty interesting tool. It's got a lot of functionality. If you've ever seen anything Kasumi has uh, done before, he's very fond of putting together these animations here. So he is demonstrating how this all kind of fits together and plays on the emulator. Um, and it, it loaded the tiles, but then threw a bunch of errors about not being able to convert uh, the content properly. I don't know if that's because of there's just no way that it was able to find to pull that together or or it's just not possible. I, I'll have to speak with him about how this exactly works because it's um, it's unfortunate but it it doesn't seem to be able to pull all that together and I may just have to end up writing my own thing uh, for something like this I feel like if I can just use somebody else's tool then you know probably better that way because uh, especially you know Kasumi and Shiru both are uh, smart guys who know what they're doing and uh, have spent a lot of time on their tools so I don't necessarily want to have to reinvent the wheel here you can see uh, he has a cool feature here where again he pulls in these sequences these individual sequence files get turned into a ROM uh, pretty quickly and have the animation for the background and the water and stuff it's pretty neat anyway so that all said that uh, you know we have the title screen right now that we load but it's, uh, it's hard-coded into the game project, and uh, we probably want to fix that so it's not, because I mean, this is you know just a super basic um, title screen. I'd like to get something in there that actually says Cerulean Ascension um, and gives you 
the options there, we'll see. Um, Jordan was suggesting maybe we need to um, mess around with tiles and uh, sprites, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and I got this, just a quick uh, mention that the, I got the suggestion to even look at uh, Kasumi's tool from uh, Franken Graphics. If you don't follow her on Twitter, she, she's on Twitter and Instagram both, and she posts really, really awesome artwork for um, the NES. She's a really talented artist, so um, definitely check her stuff out. It's pretty pretty amazing. Um, anyway, so getting back to this... I think what I want to do is see if we can see if we can get to the point where we can capture the meta tiles that need to be loaded and then map the map meta tiles to the ones that we load in the overall project definition and then if we have time, because I want to keep this relatively short for tonight, because I've been staying up uh, really late in the last few days, finishing up episode four of Zero Pages, uh, want to um, uh, see if I can maybe then bridge that gap between the map and the repeating meta tile section, but we'll see. So um, we'll do a similar thing here where we define that there's an array of meta tiles and um, let me, I opened up Explorer on my other monitor. Hold on a second. Just want to go to the right path and bring that in. Okay. And then we have our tile sets. These are the tiled tile sets. Uh, where are our meta tile files? They're in here. So. Let's see. So similarly, I guess I want to define the list of meta tiles that we would need in general as sort of our, I guess what we're kind of doing is setting up our, our char data here in the sprites and meta tiles, um, allowing us to then both reuse the meta tiles and also allow them to be referenced in sections that aren't directly tied to map, which is not something I had been thinking about before, um, but we definitely want to have. So we have the bumper, the green tile, and the water. Those are our three meta tiles for now. Obviously we'll have more as we move forward. call that green tile all right so that is that and then let's go into our asset tool here Okay, so after we do that, we want to, oops, same thing we're doing with all these other sections, right? We're just, um, keep ty typing meat instead of meta. question is right now we don't actually process the meta tiles here I believe we do it after we call load project we loop through the meta tile no we don't even do that here I guess we're doing it only when we export the map and so what we let's see so we load the map 
and then okay and then the map has the map meta tiles so what I want to do is I want to make the load of the project populate a list of meta tiles and then from there we can sort of uh, cross-reference those meta tiles from the file and just populate the list that we return here with pointers to those meta tiles, meaning that the map will now not directly load the meta tiles, but instead will reference this main list of meta tiles, um, again, to sort of help consolidate what we've got here. Um, so let's see, what does map meta tile have within it? It's got that. This is the actual meta tile. Let's get the image size palette <clears throat> collision. So that's the meta tile structure for the file itself. So uh, we're basically talking about a meta tile, a map meta tile list. then we can have our list of just the files that are separate than the actual map definition and this should just be a pointer and then this can also reference Can reference the structure, the actual meta tile content. I don't have to do it that way. I could just <clears throat> move the definition. I don't know why I decided I wanted to forward reference it like that. That was silly. All right, so I've got my meta tile. I've got my um, the meta tile file, which is just the meta tile definition. Uh, so the name of it, the path to it, the path to the image, the path, um, and then and then the actual content of the thing. And then this is the reference in the actual map, which uh, points to the file reference. And the reason we need that is because we need to be able to do what we were doing before where we're getting an export ID and if it's an object or not, um, meaning if it's actually a sprite, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, if it's actually a sprite or a background object, and then the glo global identifier, which we used when we we're searching through the map. So, all right, let's do uh, load project. So we have our project file, project files. I wonder if it's better to, yeah, no, that's okay. So we can just basically steal all this code And this is going to search, let's see, so we got our meta tiles. If it's not an array, then exit. And then if we have the array size, grab the... Pointer to full path. Uh, why is that? Why is that using 
full path in that way. Oh, right, because it's getting the pointer to the buffer. Sorry. Right, so it's getting that. Okay, that's fine. Sorry. Uh, we get the array value is string. Yep, so we're indexing into the array and we're getting it. We're getting the absolute path and then we're checking if the file exists. And this is a meta tile file. You get the file name and set it to be is it a directory false? And then it's a meta tile, not a sprite. And then we're good there. And that will handle loading the references to the meta tile. And then, so when we load the project right now, we're only checking to see if it's a sprite type. We need to add that it's a meta tile. Let's see, so we're doing some basic initialization here. I'm just going to kind of copy some of what we've got here since the initialization part is the same essentially. In fact, we can probably share that code up until the point where we have to dif differentiate. So let's do that. Um, Meta tile with our check, and then we don't have to replace the extension with dot sprite because it will, or sorry, dot meta tile because it'll already be there. And then if it exists, oh, I see, right, because if it's referencing a PNG, it'll convert it to a sprite or look for the appropriate sprite. Okay. Um, I forgot we did that there, but that's okay. Is meta tile full path. And I guess we just do load meta tile. Um, so let's create our list of meta tiles. that. So this will be a, I think this is going to be a global because it does need to exist. Well, I mean, we could pass it. Yeah, whatever. That's, I guess we'll pass it. Just a lot of parameters being passed around. Um, all right. So Meta tile, meta tile file. So that's defining our list of meta tiles, and then. Um, That's our total 
Okay, meta tiles count. Project. Um, okay, so load meta tile into the address of game meta tiles. Uh, game meta tile count. Current file list i. Full path. So that will load. Oh, not into the structure, but into the meta tile. So that will load the meta tiles into memory. And then I'm sure this is gonna have some broken parts to it because we changed up that structure. So let's uh, fix those. Um, okay, this is gonna be a little bit of a bigger change. We don't want to, we don't want to be modif, uh, do we want to be modifying? We don't want to be modifying that anymore. What we want to do is we want to grab the name of the thing and then find it in our, find it in our list and then um, map the pointer to it or you get the, grab the pointer um, of it uh, so that we can have the structure that we return back from from loading the map reference the actual meta tiles that we are we've already previously loaded so let's let's do that let's see How we want to handle that. So, do, 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 do. do I have any? Do I have a buffer in here somewhere I can use? I've got max. <laughs> Am I using this? That's our, we're gonna use this in place of the meta tile structure here. And then we're gonna reference that here. And we're just converting the forward slashes to um, two backslashes. Remember, yeah, there was no, okay. So then we have our name buffer there, and we're copying it over after we've converted it. And let's see, so now we're looking for the slash. Until we string cat full path. Why am I doing this? Why am I turning this? I'm not sure why I'm rebuilding it this way. It's a little weird. Um,
know why I'm doing the conversion here. That makes sense. Full path. It's like I'm, it's almost like I'm doing a double conversion. String tokenize it with the backslash. Put it into full path, then add a. I don't know that I need to be doing this. Let's comment this out here. Just seems like it's a wasted step. And th this might have been a um, sort of legacy thing that we phased out as we were as we were. Um, Converting all this stuff over earlier. So now, yeah, this is still part of the same nonsense. And then basically what I want to do is I want to get the absolute value of, or the absolute path of meta tile source name. And let's put this, let's make a buffer called meta tile absolute source. put that into here okay and then so it's going to check to see if that JSON file exists for the for the uh, Meta tile that we loaded in the map. We're going to assert if it doesn't exist just for debugging purposes. And let's see. So then we're going to try and get the source to grab the image. getting the short file name and part of the reason that I'm creating these buffers here for for this purpose is at least right now I'm just kind of doing a brute force translation from <clears throat> where we were loading the meta tile directly from the map and assuming that it would be a hundred percent um a hundred percent what we want um and sorry let me re restart that thought again because i was looking at this wondering what was going on so i'm just doing a brute force translation of the way that this worked with the old structure to the new structure and then we can look back at this and see if it makes sense or not <clears throat> because it's a little potentially strange um Character counter plus one. So while character counter is greater than zero, if it's slash, oh, so it's just trying to get the name of, it's trying to get the name of the meta tile. By working backwards till it finds the slash. Hmm. 
Weird. Um, so if we do get tile source, I gotta look at what this does. I think this does the same kind of conversion where it's reconstructing it with the backslashes instead of the forward slashes because we're on windows. And we get the absolute path. That all kind of makes sense the way it is. Look for the JSON file, it exists. Okay, and then image full path. We get the image full path from this image file name. Get the file name. This should just be image file name. And then I don't think we need this anymore. So now let's see. So this is now loading into the array. <clears throat> the image, let's just kind of make this work. That will fix that. but should be simple enough to make work assuming I don't mess it up too badly this is the export let's see where else all right so that built but I don't expect that that's right at all um, let's just kind of go through <clears throat> the, uh, the motions here and make sure that things are loading as expected. Um, all right. So it's all good. That's giving us the stuff that we want. So I'm gonna step out of that and we're gonna go to here and then basically go to this and just see if it, uh, really? Oh. Okay, that's why. Okay, that's all good. Let's just keep going. I just, uh, I copied that logic from the previous section and that was kind of not what we needed to do. Oh, and you know what I didn't do also? Didn't increment this, so it's just gonna keep overwriting the, um, the first instance of the meta tiles. So let's see now. Game meta tile tiles. And it did nothing. Why did it do nothing? Bumper meta tile. Step inside and look. File name. my call stack. <clears throat> oh, right. 
Well, if you don't, yeah. Yep, that's why the only thing that's loaded is the meta tile, because that's all that's actually getting loaded. Um, all right, so. Get rid of that increment. I guess it wasn't done. That's why I didn't increment and got distracted by other parts. Okay. Um, full path. Sense was just slow to respond. <sighs> okay. What's the next thing? Image full path. So I don't have, I don't know if I have that. Actually, maybe I have it in the actual meta tile. No, it's the image data. Uh, balls. Um, hmm. Well. The reason I don't have it is because we were getting it when we loaded the metatile file information from the map. Do I care about this for anything other than the map? Probably not. So what we'll do is we will move this out of this because for what we're doing it really doesn't have any meaning. We were we were using this I think for just validation, I want to say. It may not even be necessary to have thinking back on this now. But, um, all right, so current metatel target meta, uh, target file name. That's not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. So what's the next thing we need to load? If we've got the full path. We've got the metatel and we've got the name and the name will just be Gonna grab the name without the extension. Um, get file. I have two. I have get file name. Include the size here, max file folder, size, name, name, and then I'm going to remove the extension. Oh, game meta tiles, that helps. All right, so yeah, I know that's not part of this. Uh, 
congratulations, you've got moved back to where you were before. So that built, let's go back to load map because I had changed all that stuff and some of it is okay. This should go back to the way it was. Because because it was fine, or it's fine now that we went back to the way it used to be for the image path stuff. Let's, um, I don't remember how I was referencing that. Come on, source tree. I don't know why source tree takes so long to load on this computer. All right. Um, let's see. Nest asset tools. So I change this stuff and hmm, mm -mm -mm. how was this working before? I just want to put this back, this part back to the way it was basically and just grab this and, and do that. I think, right? You're going to let me, I think KDIF lets me do that, right? Or am I spoiled by beyond compare now? Um, merge. There it is. You're not going to let me do that? Okay, that's fine. Um, so we're at that part here. That's okay though, that's commented out, I think. So I don't know why it was doing that anyway. Seemed kind of weird. So now we just replace this part. The only part that is not correct is the full path part. But what we can do is based on the Metatile source name, we can look it up in the game Metatile list and then just we should be able to do file info full path like that. But that's actually, so we don't need to do that to get the full path. And I don't want to, So I don't want to go exactly back to the way it was before. I just want to
All right, so I getting the full path there, and then I'm going to convert the extension so that I get my JSON file name, and then just make sure that that exists. And then if it doesn't exist, then we have our full path there. And oh, actually, you know what? Let's use the JSON path because that's the thing that it couldn't find. That makes more sense. <clears throat> and then we've got this, which that can go back to this because that is where it belongs now. The only thing that needs to be changed here, this should be JSON file. All right, and then now that we have that, <coughs> After we've converted it, Manitel source name. I actually don't need name buffer, right? Name buffer, well, other than it's copying it, but I don't actually need that there at all, right? Okay, yeah, so this is, this is nonsense. And we just need to do now um, something where we find matching meta tile, something like that. And and what is this? This is map meta tiles M. file and game meta tiles should be passed in One day on a stream that I don't. Uh, hey, MDTA UK. Good evening. What a great Zero Pages episode. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you liked it. Um, maybe one day on stream, I'll just kind of fix some of this uh, cruft here in the uh, in in the asset tool that's accumulated as we've gone through and cha changed things. Um, but, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching the episode. I'm glad you liked it. I tried to be as detailed as I could be and keep it short too, um, which is tough. It's a lot of content. So, um, now we just gotta, now we'll, we'll dive into some other, um, some other more detailed parts, um, more detailed topics around what was shown there. Now that we have the sort of basis for everything, we can, we can dive into all of the detailed topics and cover them in much shorter episodes, you know, covering the OEM sprites and the, um, the PPU registers, the sound registers, that sort of thing. Uh, kind of bring that all together now. Find matching meta tile. Okay, so I guess I need to know how many. Well, I know how many. So four and I is less than da, 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 max meta tiles with game meta tiles I full name. 
full path. So now just file name. So if these are the same thing. Then, I guess, do I want to do a in case insensitive comparison? I guess I do because I don't want it to mess up because the paths are not cased correctly. Um, so if the file paths match, then <clears throat> map meta tile. equals the array, the address to the meta tile in this array, and then we return. Uh, I should probably return zero on success and a non-zero on failure so that we actually can check if it didn't work. Could not load, uh, could not find the matching meta tile uh, in the list for blah. Please make sure that this is loaded in the game project file. New line and temp and return. Uh, well, go to exit with errors. Go to exit with errors. Why aren't you showing up? Exit with error. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to set up a project structure that as more things are added, the ASM is neat, self-contained files, making it easier to read and add to as it goes on. Project structures are important to get right early on. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes when you're not exactly 100% sure what you're building as you go, um, you just have, you have, you know, sort of convoluted things that you do that then don't make sense anymore, and you have to refactor them out, or, you know, it's, this is as much a learning process uh, for me as it is for hopefully all of you. Um, so this was not ever meant to be a, you know, this is the best way to, this is the best game development tutorial by any means. This was just a, um, this was just a, sorry, I'm trying to think what I'm doing here as I'm typing and talking to you the same time. This was just meant to kind of show how I'm doing it and, uh, you know, based on my experience. And I think what would have helped if it is if I had had a clearer sense of what I wanted the game to be early on. Um, as I've said already, you know, it, I, I didn't have the, the design fully clear in my head uh, starting out. And so it... Um, it certainly didn't help things. Um, but it's not the worst thing in the world to have to refactor. Uh, of course, when you're experienced, you can experiment, throw in code, and figure out where it should go after you know it works. Prioritize the JSON stuff. And it would, oh, no, no, don't worry. I mean, the, part of the, whole, the whole part of me being here on stream is so you can interact, right? Uh, otherwise, I can just record it by myself, and I'm just sitting here uh, sort of talking to myself, which I do on the other videos, too, but more so just to explain what I'm doing than to interact with you all out there in the internet lands. Um, but, um, so yeah, don't worry about interrupting me. I'm, uh, I'm always surprised that you're on so late, because you're in in the UK, um, and that's, uh, it's pretty, well, what is it? Is it six hours? So it's like four in the morning there or three in the morning there. All right. 
So that's our metatiles list populated. Let's take a look at this for a second here. So that's got a, oh, that has no full path, huh? That's gonna be a problem. When I loaded this, did I not copy the full path over? I thought I did. You're a night owl. <laughs> yeah, I used to be. I uh, used to stay up till two, three, four in the morning and go to work the next day and, you know, mostly function, but it wears on you for, if you do that for too long and it was getting difficult to um, function in the morning. And I find that I'm just sort of better off overall if I, if I actually get some sleep. So I've been trying not to been trying not to um, stay up too late. Okay, so what's going on with this? We are full path to name, get full path, get file name. It gets the, oh, you know what? It, I don't think it's even getting the name here. What's going on? I'm a sense of, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about that. I try to be. I try to be a sensible person, but sometimes I feel like during the day, oh, the full path is getting corrupted. How? Um, I feel like during the day, too much is going on. I can't get stuff that I want to get done completed. Excuse me for I was gonna sneeze and then it went away. Um, and um, and then, you know, night comes around and everybody in the house goes to sleep and I can kind of focus on what it is I wanna do. And uh, so it tends to be that I get more stuff done in the evening, but there's a difference between getting stuff done and just kind of sitting and wasting your time. Cause I'd sit and just kind of do nothing or nothing valuable. I wasn't even, a lot of times I wasn't even playing a game. I'd be just watching crap um, and uh, wasting time and then staying up way too late. There was a period of time where I was playing um, a lot of games staying up late. I was playing at one point uh, The Witness um, uh, and staying up till three or four in the morning because I just got so engrossed in that game. Um, that's the full path. And then it looks like when I do that, it's corrupting full path. Hmm. Is this one better? Does this one not corrupt? <laughs> Should I get rid of that other one? Hey, Banchaku, how's it going? This one gets just the name. Also corrupt. Wow, okay. What's what am I doing here that's corrupting that? String copy to temp. Should really be buffer size, shouldn't it? Oh, because it's not a const. Um, let's go crazy and use 2K. The entire amount of memory that the NES has on it, we're using for our one string buffer. Um, okay, so what are we doing here? We're searching backwards and grabbing it and copying from um, string copy file name to temp and then string copy temp to name buffer so 
So that only works when we don't have a full path of things. Let's, hmm, what does the other one do? This searches backwards. Um, okay, so maybe I need to rename these because they're confusing. Oh, did you have a cold Banchaku or or just uh, running running around going crazy with work or something? How about that? <clears throat> and this is just get the file name, and that's going to backtrack and give me the file name with the extension. Just sick a little, getting better. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear you're feeling better. Yeah, getting six, six, no fun. Especially as an adult, you just have to kind of power through it. You don't generally get to stay home and stay in bed unless you're, you know, really sick. Which then you definitely can't even appreciate being home because you feel terrible. <laughs> um, all right, so now let's figure out why this is corrupting my buffers. Um, all right, so we string copy that into full path, which is what we want. And then I want to get the file name. So let's see, so the source file name into file name, max file size 255, and how are we doing here? Why? I'm confused. I am the confused what is it's just copying probably something really dumb let's see source file path the position to the file name copy the address of from there into file name and we're saying the max file so let me see file name that we're passing into here is file oh okay wait a minute this is not well that's okay so let's see if this actually works so we have temp and So this should give us the name there, and that's the file. That looks okay. I guess I don't want to have the breakpoint here so much as I want it where we were before. Um, so it gives us our absolute path for the meta tile. It exists.
So that's the full path. That is the name that we want to put it into. This file has only the full path. So we're going to copy the name of the file into that. That's looking okay. I'm wow, okay. So what's going on? What's the So we've loaded our meta tiles and now we're loading the map here. Oh, did I confuse myself about what the current state of things is currently? That's entirely possible. This is zero. So we have the name, we have the full path. I'm reaching that point here where I, I think I've kind of run out of steam here. Um, all right. Let's see. I've just confused things. So, all right, I've loaded the meta tile. So there's our meta tile data that just got loaded in. That's not the issue right now. Right now we've got our full path and we're copying it in and it gets put into there. And that's good. Oh, oh, okay. So very important, <laughs> very important. Um, yeah. So now I understand what happened. Uh, name, uh, the name property in the structure is a max small buffer. And I, in my code specified that it's a max file folder name. Now, when you're writing your code in debug, functions like string copy s will try to help you um, determine places where you have bugs in your code by doing things like after initializing the memory, or sorry, after copying your string um, and placing the null terminator, they will initialize the rest of your string with um, garbage characters so that if you have a buffer overrun somewhere, it will either um, overrun the buffer and trigger a breakpoint uh, while you're running with the um, buffer overrun protection uh, checking, uh, finding that, or in this case, it overran the buffer and clobbered the next buffer in my structure. Um, so we have two choices. We can make this either max small buffer or max file folder name, and actually we'll just do this. Um, I wonder if I have this used anywhere else incorrectly. Yeah, it looks like uh, we, oh, well, maybe those are, let's see. Those are okay. This one would be, this is, yep, this, excuse me, this one would be, broken here. All right. So yeah, we needed to do that. That was just one place where this was incorrect. So we've got our full path now. Yeah. All right. So cool. So it got us our file name and our full path correctly. We were meta tile loaded. We removed our extension so that we just have the bumper. 
as the name, we increment to the next one. Cool, all right, good. And now, we wanna wait till we get to this. We're done with that. All right, so we have, that is empty, that's no good. That is bumper.tsx. Okay, that's what that code was about. That is, we are stripping the, right, the fact that it's escaped in the JSON and doesn't get unescaped by Jasmine. Rawr. So what we will do is we will move this back here and uncomment this and it doesn't need to go into there, it needs to go into, uh, not into temp into what is this that's the wrong buffer so that needs to go into this and then Okay. I think that will work for us here. Once we get this part working, I think I'm gonna wrap for the evening. Buffer too small. Yeah, yeah, do do do. So I've been being lazy and allocating all this memory off the heap, mostly because I didn't want to deal with, uh, sorry, off the stack, mostly because I didn't want to deal with allocating off the heap, but I should probably not do that, especially because we're allocating pretty large chunks of data. So let's fix that. It doesn't really change all that much. We just have to initialize the memory. After we allocate it, okay, so that's been allocated now, and I don't care about freeing it because it will get freed when the application exits. It is not a critical buffer. What is the problem with this too small buffer too small temp metatal source what is temp having it nothing context let's go back I obviously made a mistake here but I want to look at this before I Oh, how was I doing this before? Copied it to name buffer. 
and then it was string concatenating it into the full path. Wait, no. Got the we had name buffer. We were copying the name into the name buffer. And then it was rebuilding it the full path and then getting the absolute path. Am I still allocating the name buffer? Let's go back to this here. So this was replaced with this. Right, that was replaced with that. We're putting it into name buffer. We're doing our thing here. Okay, so now we need a full path. That's why I was complaining it was too small. That's okay. That we changed the allocation to the heap. That doesn't. That doesn't matter. I thought it was. We, there was. I was running into a problem uh, another time where it was creating an issue that we were allocating stuff off the. Off the um, stack, and I was out trying to allocate too much, and it's causing a crash. But it wasn't the problem here, though. But it's okay that we changed it. So that's the full path. And then we need to get the absolute path of full path. Because that's going to be our thing that we use to look up this. Okay. And then the only other... Uh, this part's okay. So let me comment this here because I had forgotten why we were doing this. So replace uh, backslashes, uh, sorry, forward slashes with backslashes for windows. And then move the extra backslashes that come from um, the escaping in JSON. And we have a full path, except that that is bumper.tsx. Bumper and while that is technically not wrong, what we want is bumper.metatile. So they will be named one to one. Oh, stop it. Yes, I know, I know, I didn't do the right size parameter, max file folder, name. Okay, try again. Okay, that's our full path, dot metatile. So that's not even right either, right? Because it's not poop okay I mean that's not a big deal I just put it in the wrong place um, I'm gonna move this it's got to get this tile set source and then the meta tile should reside in the same path as the 
image. This to rename this commit. What is that? All right, so copy the metatile into the metatile source and then replace file extension of metatile source name with um, max size of file folder name to dot metatile that will give us the path now finally um, so then the question is do we need to be doing any of these things yes because it's looking for the json file based on all of this convoluted nonsense um hopefully the source i believe the source gets converted over correctly so the pathing is correct with the right uh what read access violation full path where are we Oh yeah, we're not. Not here yet. Um, I can just do full path here. Find matching meta tile. Okay, so our full path is Oh, yeah. Hmm. All right. So now we're in here. And it looks for it and it found it. So the file info is this. That has the actual metatile information. So we return zero. Image file name. Let's see if that got bumper.j, bumper.png. Get file name. Okay, cool. So that. Yes. Okay, good. So that all worked now the way it's supposed to. Let's um, run through that one more time just to make sure. Meta tile, we have found it. We have our image file name. And in the meta tile, we should have the pointer to the file info. We have, let's see. Oh, that's because um, it's the index zero map meta tiles m green tile green tile meta tile yes okay good so that has all of that stuff matching correctly and let's get rid of this breakpoint uh-oh what what didn't it like? Could not find the matching meta tile in the list for null. For null? Okay, well, first of all, that's not the, that's not the tile set anymore. All right, and all right, run that again. See what it doesn't like about the meta tile. For oh, Scout, why are you looking at Scout? Scout is not a Scout is not a oh because yeah. 
So should I be doing this at the end? I guess because... Right, so what's happening is it's finding the scout meta, or it's finding this definition of the scout um, object, which is just another tile set. And it is flagging that as not being found, but it's an object, so it shouldn't matter. So what we really want to do is we want to if this meta tile is actually used by the map objects enemies then we copy the contents of the object meta tile list so, so if the GID doesn't equal zero then we make it an object do we want to do that here let's see so after we've done all of this stuff, we're looping through the entire thing. And if the global ID is zero, let's go take a look at the file. Mm, excuse me. So let's see here. GID4, GID5. Those are one, three, and stuff like that. So, how is it mapping this? Map meta tiles, map object GIDs. believe I'm just okay right if it's an object that shows up in this object group then we consider it an object otherwise we know it's background so we'll, let's see so we would want to then Map meta tiles I stop it. Well, that's not set, so the image full path is what we're going to need. And we're just going to string copy that into metatile file. So we got that, and then we're going to replace the extension to find the thing. going to look for it based on this and this will throw our error so we'll go through the whole thing and set up everything like we were before it's just in this loop and we're determining if it's a sprite object or just a standard meta tile that's going to appear in the background um, we can differentiate and um, See if we can find the matching meta tile that was loaded. Um, M. Oh yeah. Uh, I. Load map. B. 
bugger. Why am I loading this? I don't really need to be doing that. Don't need to be doing that here. Do I? Mm. Not really. What is this? The export? Oh, it's the load. Okay. So we still want to load those, but do it this way and like this. So we get the file information and load the image. Um, it should probably be the full, full path or Actually, even better, image full path, right? All right, so we're in here for what? GID is one. Map meta tiles. Map meta tiles I is bumper, which is in fact a background. So the full path is bumper PNG. We're replacing the extension. We are looking for it and we found it. So we are now good. This this will have a pointer to the file info, which has the meta tile preloaded into it, which has the image. And then we have this meta tiles list, which just is the, I wonder if I use that anywhere. global. Oh, it's passed in. So we load the images and pass them back. All right. I mean, that's fine. So image full path is that PNG. Loaded it. Okay, cool. This is water. It's finding all the things it should, so that's exciting. Um, all right, so we've loaded the map. This is what, an export? Yeah, so we've exported it. Um, if we look at the game meta tiles, we have, looks like proper data in here. Um, Hmm. Maybe not. Let's see. Now that looks like that's okay because the bumper does have collision and that bit mask does seem correct. Let's try um, one, and let's see what that is. Green tile, meta tile, version, palette, has collision zero. Yeah, that, that seems, that, that all seems good. Okay. So now, That's creating the empty one. So we have our three plus that one. Okay, that's good. 
Um, there's still something. Let me think about this. So the indexing is still going to be based right now off of how the map loads it, but we'll we'll have to change that. We'll do that next time. I'm kind of like I said, I'm I'm done. But I mean, overall, stack around temp was corrupted. Overall, I'm feeling like we're we're close around this one. Hmm. Stack around temp was corrupted. Does temp have in it? No, oh, it's gone. Doesn't help me. I mean, it executed and succeeded, but we gotta see what that stack corruption is because that obviously may contribute to problems. Explode dot char why would that be corrupted bull.char player.char cloud.char all that seems all that seems okay Runtime check. Second round temp was corrupted. Breaking new loading exception. Copy details. Stack around temp. Well, you know what? It's a round temp. So let's see what else we were doing around temp. Oh, there's also this. Could be this temp that it's referring to. Let's um, let's call this um, <clears throat> a sprite sprite name, so that we can differentiate in case that's the temp it's referring to, because the other one looked fine. temp elsewhere in here also or let's see Should probably start splitting this up into pieces it's getting rather long okay so yeah I have a temp here <laughs> this is um, that one okay I guess it would make more sense to go back and look at where we're manipulating the meta tiles since that's what we changed
This is just converting from one type of struct to another. I don't know that this would be causing the problem. Air temp, really? <laughs> uh, temp map height, how about that? So there's this one, this might be. Let's see if this is the one it's referring to. fault for naming something temp in multiple places in the same function. But the language lets you do it. it. Makes it real super easy. It's one of the it's, it's one of the nice things about being able to work in C++ is you get to do your local variable declarations. The problem is something like this though and um, you wouldn't have this problem in straight up C because you have to declare your function, uh, sorry, your variables at the beginning of the function. So you wouldn't have these kinds of duplicates. Um, okay, meta tile temp, that makes more sense. All right, so what is the problem? with this code. So we have meta tile temp, we're copying file info name to max file folder. Let's call, let's just say max file folder name. And then replacing that. Then export the character, uh, replace file extension. Is it the truncate or some weird nonsense like that? What's the deal? Wish it was a little more specific than that. Do this. If we if we just skip this, just for the sake of seeing what happens, does it um, does it still crop something? No. All right. So it's definitely something in the code. Oh, you know what? Not sure why I had done that. That's that, that's this. See what this is doing here. Another tile file. Okay. 
So we copy the full path over to the metatile file. We replace the extension. We get the length of the thing. Not sure why I needed the length, but okay. Um, okay, so then we copy the name over to Metatile Temp. And that's Max File folder name. Okay. And then we're going to replace the extension with dot char. Hmm. Why did that get initialized to zero? What is that? Remove file extension. Why did this that the byte right before it? It is. Why did that byte before it become zero? String length of file name, name length, name is a lot. Iterate backwards until you find the i and break out, and then if i doesn't equal zero, file name i is zero. That seems fine, but why would that have made this change for remove file extension okay and then you string concatenate a file extension onto file name Hmm. Is that where the problem is coming from? Let's see. Let's get to let's comment everything else after that part out and see if we still get that stack corruption. I just really want to get rid of that before we um, wrap up here tonight. Yeah, so that is the, I'm pretty sure that's the stack corruption, but I don't understand why replace file extension here is metatile file. We get the length for it. And what do we use it for? We use it to load the metatile down there. Um, hmm. String copy to metatile file and then replace file extension. Let's just walk through it, I guess. It's going to be the easiest way to see what's going on. <clears throat> so, uh, actually, before we... Where's my call stack? Where's my call stack? Uh, metatile temp. And metatile file. And so what we were seeing is that the metatile temp is right here. Oh, does it not have the... Really? Wait a minute. It doesn't have it? Oh, because the name... Oh! Okay, so I... I must have changed the behavior here. Let's see, remove file extension. If you get to the point where 
i is greater than or equal to zero, i equals that, then breaks. So you're going to go to the point where it's negative one. No, you're going to go i is greater than or equal to, yeah, you're going to go, okay. Um, that's just bad logic. That should just be if i is greater than or equal to zero. That's why it was setting the entry there. Um, but that, okay, that fixes that problem. Why does the name, the name doesn't have the extension yet. So when we're setting this up, I am getting the full path and then I'm removing the file extension. I guess I don't want to do that. So now we have bumper.metatile, it became bumper.char, and all should be right with the universe again. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. Let's wrap it up. So for next time, need to check what this is generating and continue on our work where we have defined our meta tiles here. Make sure that now the map is indexing based on not the map order, but rather the sort of global order of these meta tiles and that should be relatively straightforward to do and then that allows us to have all the map uh, functionality organized um, uniformly across all of the map files and then we can do the next part of what we want to do here which is we can have an object and say that it is a type um, Meta tile uh, scroll speed five, let's say, and meta tile is um, I'm gonna go with that we don't need to put the full path, that it'll look it up based on the list. We can say, okay, I wanna do that and then uh, repeat. I don't know how many how many screens should we do that for, um, you know, ten times, right? So it'll load the water meta tile. Once this map is done, it will load the water meta tile across the top, and then repeat at um, repeat ten times. Probably want to make the scroll speed increment uh, gradually. We don't want to go from straight from one to five. Um, I think that would be too jarring. Um, we'll also take a look at some of the stuff that Jordan has provided uh, as far as the title screen and the sprite um, for the main ship, uh, which I showed at the end of last week's live stream. So for the few of you who stuck around for the end of that, you got to see it early. Um, but uh, I'm excited for you guys to see the title screen too. And um, then, of course, the last thing, the pre-order is available on itch.io. If you're interested in getting access to the source code, I'm going to sync it up because it's a little bit out of date. Um, and uh, a few people have done that pre-order. That's pretty cool. And uh, it'll give you a little bit of background for, of the story of the game. If you're interested in that, you can just go to the page and read up on that. Um, again, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. It's just if you're interested and you feel like it, certainly appreciate it. But uh, as always, thank you for watching. And uh, if you want to reach me, I'm on Twitter at Clarvis. I'm on Nintendo Age Azelius. Uh, you can feel free to comment on this recording on uh, YouTube and uh, join me next week on Thursday for streaming. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and have a great night. Take care.